up YouTube and welcome back to Morgellons discussion on the road. I'm your host and I'm very busy. Been doing a lot of work here recently. Uh, more and more people are getting diagnosed with Lyme disease and that includes one of my clients so I'm helping her make it through the or navigate through the struggles of being in a place which isn't considered endemic for Lyme disease but that reality hitting pretty hard. Hey, if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and click that red button down there for me. I appreciate all your help, and I definitely appreciate all my members uh, for hanging on for so long. You guys are doing a great job, and it's definitely helping me get up, get out there, and do things, including raising awareness. There's a few things we got to go over today. But first, I want to make sure everybody is aware that there is nothing wrong for standing up for what the science says. And the science says a lot of things that are not being shared in online groups or even from official outlets but we want to make sure we stand firm to those truths because a lot of science went into establishing those facts first and foremost Morgellons fibers don't originate from the environment they come from the human body and what that means is that when you demonstrate Morgellons it has to be demonstrated inside the skin because otherwise you can't just pick up a handful of dust off the environment and figure out which ones were shed from your body and which ones weren't. Not only that, we don't really have any evidence that Morgellons fibers shed. There just hasn't been enough research to really follow the sores and what happens with them over time. You would think that because skin replenishes itself that eventually they would come out, but we just don't have the science to prove that yet. But what we do have the science to prove is that they always originate inside the skin. And then there's the second thing, which is Morgellons is a multi-systemic disease. Lyme and syphilis are multi-systemic diseases. They can result in the manifestation of the Morgellons skin condition. Now, I want to address what Dr. Savely said in one of our previous interviews. She said that syphilis is a different thing and that she doesn't see that there could be a connection because there are different things going on there. And that may just be because of the limitations of who she is seeing. You know, people don't go see a Lyme doctor if they have a sore on their penis. They go to the health clinic because that's a sure sign of syphilis. So that's one of the limitations that comes from having the independent research funded by the Charles Holman Foundation is that they're provided a lot of the patient specimens. We don't have like an independent place for Morgellons people to come through. They, they have always historically come through the Charles Holman Foundation. So... If you're looking at Morgellons through the lens of Dr. Ginger Savely's Lyme disease practice and all the patients coming to the Charles Holman Foundation, then you could easily make the mistake in assuming that there's no way syphilis could result in Morgellons. But I know that the research says that Morgellons looks like secondary syphilis. In Morgellons patients, the same kind of skin blemishes, lesions, and ulcerations that appear in syphilis patients appear in Morgellons patients. We do know that there has to be confirmation testing for Lyme disease because syphilis can produce a false positive on that assay. But the opposite is not true. Syphilis, will, uh, Lyme disease will not cause a false positive on a syphilis test. And because of these facts, it's very important, very important that patients know which infection they're dealing with, one or the other. Because I talk about the resemblance of Morgellons with secondary syphilis, and because the research says that it's not unreasonable to hypothesize that syphilis could be the key etiologic factor in a subset of Morgellons disease patients, I have patients that come to me and say, hey, I was diagnosed with syphilis. I also have Morgellons. 
it's rare, but it happens. And I'm not going to marginalize any of their experiences and think that, hey, well, you must really have Lyme disease because Morgellons doesn't happen with syphilis when the research says exactly the opposite. It's not unreasonable to hypothesize that Morgellons could happen in a subset of patients with syphilis. It's also interesting to note that Dr. Ava Shapey has demonstrated through a review of the literature an association of breast cancer at the same interval of Lyme disease and syphilis. Lyme disease and syphilis both can result in breast cancer and lymphomas. So it's not unreasonable to think that, yeah, syphilis could happen in Lyme disease patients. But when we're talking about a multi-system disease, we are talking about Lyme and syphilis. We're not talking about Morgellons. Because the only system... <laughs> that sun looks great today, man, but it's all up in the camera. The only system Morgellons has been demonstrated to manifest in is the skin. It has not been demonstrated to manifest inside any muscles, any bones. There haven't been any studies which have shown Morgellons fibers inside the central nervous system or the brain. And that makes sense since Morgellons fibers are often the result of malformed hairs and superficial skin. In fact, when you look at the history of Morgellons paper, it makes the case that there is no evidence that Morgellons occurs anywhere but in the skin, and evidence or papers that claim to show evidence are severely lacking in their methodology and data. Uh, for example, the studies that are cited in the history of Morgellons about uh, possible oral manifestations don't demonstrate fibers. They couldn't find the fibers or they didn't look or they didn't find spirochetal infection and that makes it less likely that a person has Morgellons if they don't have a spirochetal infection. So is Morgellons a multi-system disease? No. Lyme disease is and Lyme disease is a multi-system disease that can affect the integruitary system, which the skin is a part of. But it's only been demonstrated to affect the skin. So you don't have to agree with everything that's coming out of the Charles Holman Foundation. Sometimes they are wrong. and. I did come out and speak out against these emails I was getting before I was interviewing guests, volunteering for them, uh, basically just downing me, you know, talking about how I'm unprofessional and I'm not liked. And this was coming from people inside the Charles Holman Foundation. And so if they're going to talk to me like that while I'm volunteering for them, then what's to keep them from talking to other patients like that who aren't? You know, and we have heard stories of other people coming forward saying, yeah, the Charles Holman Foundation was mean to me or people working for them there were. Look, there's a lot of people that come together to make up the Charles Holman Foundation. They don't have to keep one person around if they're treating people with disrespect. They just don't have to. You know, sure, they funded a lot of research. But it's that research which defines what Morgellons is, not the Charles Holman Foundation. So I want you to think about this as we go forward and things start to really unravel. Morgellons is defined by science. Science is objective findings that can be repeated. And in this case, they have been. 
independently verified across a myriad of universities employed in this research initiative. Yeah, the Charles Solomon Foundation funded that research, but they didn't direct the outcome of it. They may have influenced our perceptions, the conclusions that can be drawn by supplying the patient specimens. If everything's filtered through the Charles Solomon Foundation, then yeah, you're going to get a lot of Lyme disease patients. But they cannot say, okay, the Morgellons fibers are keratin and collagen just because they say so. That has to have been demonstrated, and it was, independently, verified. So, when you're going forward and you're saying, hey, Jeremy, the Charles Holman Foundation website says that Morgellons is a multi-system disease, think about it for a second and ask yourself, well, wait a minute. Maybe that's one of the reasons why people aren't taking the research seriously because they're saying something that's contrary to the research you know the research says that Morgellons patients are often afflicted by other conditions and that is indicative of a Lyme disease infection that's true it does not say that Morgellons is the disease that is causing all these conditions in every system in the body because Morgellons is only demonstrated to manifest in one place, and that's in the skin. So, just going back over thing, everything we talked about, and then I'm going to meet up with my client here to try to move forward on the initiatives that we're working on together. First and foremost, Morgellons fibers do not originate in the environment. They only originate in the skin, in the human body, and that's why... To demonstrate them, they have to be demonstrated in the skin. They're microscopic. You have to use at least a 50 times microscope to look at these things embedded in the skin. Just because the Charles Holman Foundation website says that Morgellons is a multi-systemic disease, a multi-system disease doesn't mean that it really is. Lyme is really a disease. Morgellons is a condition. Maybe the CDC doesn't want to look at Morgellons because they realize it's just a condition and they're already dealing with the causative factor, which would be Lyme disease. And, you know, as much work as they have to do on evolving Lyme disease so that more patients are diagnosed early on and don't have to ever experience the late stage scenario or they're on a crap load of antibiotics nobody understands what's going on around them in the community and they just can't get the emotional support they need you know there's a lot of work that needs to go into getting to them at that point but what you can do is volunteer with some Lyme disease organizations to talk with the federal government to talk with your elected leaders about improving what's going on with Lyme disease but I'm going to tell you all right now the story with syphilis is exactly the same you know, the first thing I hear is that, well, we've got a test for syphilis. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's 100% accurate. No. No. Syphilis is just like Lyme disease. They both impair the immune response from producing the antibodies which would reveal themselves on those serologic screens. Even PCR, molecular detection methods are not accurate for syphilis or Lyme disease. It's probably more accurate for Lyme disease because there are more contemporary uh, specimens to utilize for amplification. You know, a lot of places still think that syphilis is something that happened in the 1800s, but it's, it's right here. And you know what the truth is, it's probably always been here. The same autoimmune conditions Lyme disease and syphilis can result in. Like I stated earlier, there is a volume of evidence that both Lyme disease and syphilis are associated with breast cancer. So, you know, to say that Morgellons is only occurring in Lyme disease, the evidence just indicates otherwise. You know, you got to keep in mind 
what looks like something from one point of view may look like something completely different at another. And that's why you need objective research to validate what's really going on. What do you guys think? Let me know. Leave a comment down below. I appreciate all the support I'm getting. No, I'm not speaking out against the Charles Holman Foundation. I am speaking out against some of the things that are going on there. I don't think it's right to make patients think that the CDC is responsible for this disastrous condition when they're addressing Lyme disease right now. A lot of patients with Morgellons have a doctor, a specialist who is able to get them there. And even just an infectious disease doctor occasionally will be able to get a Morgellons patient back to the point of remediation. But no patient is ever going to get there if every day they wake up and go to bed, they're fixated on this belief that the CDC could just make everything better by recognizing Morgellons as a legitimate disease. The CDC recognizes Lyme as a legitimate disease, and that Lyme is what causes Morgellons to manifest. It manifests in patients with Lyme disease, and it doesn't manifest in patients without it. It could manifest in patients with syphilis, but we won't know until we actually do a study that looks at, out of a thousand syphilis patients, how many have Morgellons. Let me know. Leave a comment down below. I gotta go back inside and do some work, so hopefully this gets uploaded today, and we'll talk to you soon.